Hey everybody, this week I'm going to be talking about how more and more people are calling for Trump's resignation. We're going to talk about how Fox News actually compared the Confederate flag to the rainbow flag. I'm going to touch on that bathroom bill that failed in Texas, and I'll be chatting with my dear friend, trans activist, actor, and comedian, Ian Harvey. I'm Dana Goldberg, and you are watching Out in Left Field. Thank you so much for joining me again this week. I hope everyone watching got to see at least some of the incredible phenomenon we had, that total solar eclipse. Some of the Trump supporters didn't heed the warning of not looking directly into the sun because all of those warnings came from scientists and NASA, so they just thought it was fake news. A bill has actually been introduced for him to take a mental health exam to see if he's competent enough to serve as president of the United States. Psst. So a guy named Robert Reich, a former Secretary of Labor for the Clinton administration, actually says it's time for Trump to go. As thin-skinned as the president is, he doesn't seem to care what Robert Reich has to say, probably because he doesn't listen to anything unless it comes from the Third Reich. So he's also said that the president can already be impeached on obstruction of justice, abuse of power, and a violation of the emoluments clause in the Constitution. I mean, come on, if the Republicans can impeach Clinton for lying under oath about a blowjob, surely they can muscle it up to impeach a Russian colluding white supremacist Nazi sympathizer. So while the president was defending white supremacy and racism, Star Parker at Fox News was actually comparing the Confederate flag to the rainbow flag, saying that they're one and the same. Now, what was weird is the interview wasn't about the LGBTQ community. She was talking about Nancy Pelosi, and then she took a hard left right into crazy town. The same people that are demanding that the Confederate flag comes down are the same people that are insisting that the rainbow flag goes up. These two flags represent the exact same thing, that certain people groups are not welcome here. So if Nancy Pelosi wants to say that we're going to start shutting down First Amendment rights of a certain group of people, then what happens the next time that the homosexuals want to walk through an American city and protest and counter protesters come out? Okay. Let's have a little history lesson, shall we? The Confederate flag used to stand for Southern history and culture. Well, one of the problems is that Southern history is rooted in slavery, and now it's become a symbol of white supremacy and racism. On the other hand, the rainbow flag came to be because a man by the name of Gilbert Baker was asked by Harvey Milk to create a new symbol for the LGBT community because for so long we were using the pink triangle, which originated in Nazi Germany, to identify homosexuals. And so, like neighborhoods and property values, the gays took something really shitty and made it really beautiful. Also, can we please remember that one group is actually protesting the perceived notion that their rights are being taken away from them, and the other group is actually protesting the fact that their rights are being taken away from them. And one story that didn't get enough attention was the fact that the bathroom bill in the Texas House got flushed down the toilet, probably because at the same time the president was putting the rest of the country in the shitter. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm done with the potty humor. I really wish all of these guys like Dan Patrick would get over their repressed homosexual tendencies and stop trying to take away the rights of the LGBTQ community. Like Rick Bratton in Missouri, who doesn't think that homosexuals are actually human beings. Now, if I had to guess, I would bet that picture is Rick's Grinder profile picture, so I'm pretty sure this guy's probably gonna get busted in a public bathroom with a male page at any minute. The lady doth protest too much. Now, there have been a lot of people speaking out in support of the trans community, but I'm about to introduce you to someone in that community. My dear friend, trans activist, comedian, and actor, Ian Harvey. Thank you so much for coming back and joining us this week. I'm so happy to have my guest. He is one of my dear friends on and off the stage. He is a trans activist, actor, and comedian, the very handsome Ian Harvey. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I was trying to get in your frame. <laughs> I like when I you're in my frame. Uh, we need to talk about the fact that we both did the glitter run for the LGBT Center of Los Angeles on Sunday. Yeah. And I have showered twice, and it's Everywhere, I can still see it I've all over you. I've showered three times and shaved my beard off. I did as well. well. So you've done incredible things. I'm so proud of you. For those of you that have not watched Transparent, you need to. There is a hysterical scene of you in this dildo that you were basically trying to... Dry fuck uh, Gabby Hoffman. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, you know, that scene came out of me going into the writer's room, uh, Transparent's writer's room. Jill Soloway invited me in and some of my stories about cock shopping and things like that all hit the page of the script. And her sister who wrote that episode, um, who was also queer, 
um, really listened to that, absorbed it, and in incorporated it in the script. Yeah, this seems so. fantastic. You, I was so proud of you, just as a friend. But I mean, you're you're really you're really good actor. Well, you're you know really what? I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Um, and sometimes that's when it works out the best. I really don't. I don't. And actually, you know, that was the, um, one of the things that I think that um, Jill liked was that I didn't know what I was doing, so she could help me get to where she wanted me to be for that role. Right. One of the things that you're not shy about and you talk about in your comedy special is the fact that you haven't had bottom surgery. What was your choice in that, that you were like, I'm good with what I have? It's interesting. I, I want to honor anybody who identifies who they are with their words and that that's all it takes to be who you are. For me, like it was about my chest and it was about looking more masculine on the exterior and like getting to get up in the mirror and look in the mirror in the morning and go, oh, that's, there you are. If you want to play fair, it's interesting because that is like the number one tr question that trans people get asked. Right. The no actually, number, number one might be, what, what's your real name? I am not offended by anybody who honestly and earnestly mistakes my name. It's not a big deal. Um, it's been, it's been 15 years that my mother, but my mother is old and she's forgetful and she still calls me by my birth name and so I will be out in public. You know, we'll be at a store together and I'll be down the aisle and she'll be like, Janet, come here! <laughs> and I come running up. And you know, everybody just thinks my mother's crazy because do I look like a Janet, and right? And it's one of my favorite jokes. Every time you tell it, it makes me laugh. Because so, I can imagine um, it happening. I do appreciate how you use humor um, in almost all aspects of your transition. When you and I were touring together, Jason and I walk into the room and Ian is standing there. You're standing there in your tidy whities like Superman, just standing there, and both Jason and I's eyes went right to your crotch. <laughs> I know, I don't want people to talk about trans people's genitals, but I do want you to see me in my tidy whities You sure do. But one of the things I love doing is when someone talks about, well, I don't know a trans person, I'm like, you probably do, you just don't know but it. But also, when people say that they don't understand it, I call bullshit on yeah, that. Yeah, I do too. Because, you know what, I, if, if you have... If you have woken up every day of your life and looked in the mirror and assessed your gender and thought, perfect, then you're the fucking weirdo. Because everybody else I know is struggling. There's people who are getting their abs sculpted because they want to be more masculine or more feminine. And I just want to say, what is the difference if I had my chest surgery to be more masculine and we just identify feelings and the motivation of why we're doing things, then I think we have so much more shared space. So that's why I call bullshit on when people are, oh, I just can't imagine. I'm like, yes, you, you can. can. I really want to know as a trans man, like how does this affect you personally and what do you think about these bathroom bills that are being s submitted all well, over the country? Look, I think that the number one thing that, that people in small communities can do and statewide is start to push for um, gender neutral bathrooms in all schools and all public spaces. The number of trans people that have ever assaulted another person in the restroom, in the, in the women's room, is zero. So, However, there have been a lot of Republican senators that have actually gone to jail or been arrested for doing lewd acts with other absolutely. of their same gender absolutely. in the bathroom. So maybe we should start banning uh, Republican senators from restrooms. What do you think? Absolutely. And the other side of this is that the danger part of this is that it's not actually trans people that are attacking other people, it's other people attacking trans people in restrooms and in those, in those kind of spaces. My suggestion is let's all stop fucking policing everybody else's gender and how they want to present themselves in the world and let's start advocating for gender neutral bathrooms in all of our local communities. If this bathroom bill would actually go through, you would have to use a women's restroom. Yeah, and on my and license. And they don't think, right. On my license, it says F for female. So I would be, so if you are thinking about being in favor of that law, this will be in the ladies' room. In your comedy routine, you have another reason why you uh, still have an F on your license. What's that about? If I ever get arrested and have to go to jail, I'm going to the girl jail. That's <laughs> right, yes. Power to Daddy's the Daddy's home, yeah. so, yeah. <laughs> And for those of you that are watching, you're not Los Angeles, you want to see Ian Harvey live, you can go to ianharvey.com. He also has a comedy special called May the Best Cock Win. Which, by the way, was the number one download on porn sites. <laughs> I'm not even kidding you. Because everybody thought that it was going to be a cock fight. I want to know if there was some guy that was like, yeah, and like all lubed up and ready to go, and then I walk on stage and tell some jokes. I want to know how long he edged himself out before letting, letting go. Right, That's, before he was like, no, what? I'm going to turn no, I'm about to, yeah, no, yeah, I'm gonna turn it off. Yeah. No, just, no, now just, it's just, a, just a few more. more. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining me this week. I love that you continue to watch every single week. If you like the episode, share it. That's why I'm going to continue to make these. So please join me next week. And again, I'm Dana Goldberg, and you've been watching Out in Left Field. 
Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching and to show our appreciation, we're gonna have a share contest. Share the video, the advocate is gonna go through and pick three people at random and to say thank you, we're gonna send you one of our brand new out in left field mugs. Thank you so much for watching and as always, enjoy the outtakes. Bye. Hey everybody, I just turned into Peter Brady. Hold on, there's someone just river dancing in the background. It's okay, cause I have this mess to come anyway. Track activist, you should see him do the fucking hurdles. It just sounds like they're getting a hard on for Trump. Paul Ryan just like, Sorry, cat hair. Glittering cat hair. That's everywhere. I always feel like emoluments is lotion. Perceived. Not perceived. Perceived. English is my first language. You're already gay with your own dick, so let's just close the case on that. I'm not gay enough with my own dick. I need to work. <laughs> <laughs> that one got me giggling. It was so good.